Ben's like, hey, call me when the temperatures are at the absolute worst. I want to talk to you guys about smallmouth. I always say I'm a saltwater guy, but I, if I had to pick one fish to fish for for the rest of my life, it'd be smallmouth. Juan Brute of Wilderness Systems has been sending me photos of giant smallmouth for forever, since I've started a kayak angler. He sent me an invite this year, and I knew I had to get down there. Now for weeks he had been telling me, man, it is perfect conditions. The day before I went down there, it snowed. The water temperature went from 60 degrees to 47. A couple weeks ago, a uh, nice warming trend in the spring. Today, we had about a 13 degree swing in the last couple days just in water temperature. When you have a big drop in water temperature like that, the bite pretty much dies. So the smallmouth tend to start looking down, so we went to the bottom with our presentations. They tend to also look for smaller things to eat, and so we downsized our lures to around 30 inches. started getting a pattern on these smallmouth, picking up one by one. Juan kept getting them left and right. I got a few, but nothing really of some size, you know, that I was looking for coming down on this trip. I figured that we'd be getting 18 inch, 20 inch smallmouth left and right, uh, but we really had to work for these fish. We paddled back to the launch, loaded up the kayaks, and drove only five minutes down the road to the main river. We launched on the confluence of the Juniata River and the Susquehanna. Now when these rivers come together, it forms this big eddy that you can just sit in all day long on anchor. Uh, it's only about five to seven feet deep. You just cast out into the main current and let it drift by, watching your rod tip like a hawk. And we're, we're just not getting fish. We cannot pattern them at all. After a couple hours of not catching fish, we start mixing things up. Finally, Juan starts to present his soft plastic on the swing, casting upriver, letting it swing out and across him, bouncing in the current on a, on a tight line. It's all small ones. We're really not finding any big fish, but we're getting fish. We're figuring them out. We caught some, you know, good number of fish today. We caught uh, one really decent fish that, that Ben happened to latch into. Finally, I set the hook on something that feels pretty solid, thinking it's probably a lot, but then I feel a big thump in the line. Now, for most of the guys that fish the Susquehanna, 18 inches isn't really a big fish. It's actually kind of a small fish or the average size fish. This fish really made the entire trip, the whole seven hour drive, totally worth it. It was actually my personal best. And that's why spring is. Uh, one day it can be really hot, things happening, catching a ton of fish. The next day the water cools off significantly like it did now. Uh, and then you've got to adjust your tactics. It's day by day when you're spring fishing. Here's a trip tip for you guys if you're going to be fishing far away from home and staying over a couple days. There's nothing wrong with car camping. I've converted my truck bed into a full-on camper. So right away after I got my truck, I picked up this ARE truck cap and also the Yakima racks. So at the back of the truck bed, I keep things that are, you know, I need all the time or quick access things. So I've got my spare top slider water shoes. I got my uh, some bungees, my Yeti Roadie 20. This is where I keep my fly rods, my rod tubes. I have uh, paddles, canoe paddles, kayak paddles in here. So I haven't really found a better system yet for my rods, but right now I'm just tying them to the accessory handles here on the truck bed that all Tacomas have. Sold these suckers for my fiance when I realized I didn't have any pillows. So, so probably the most important thing in this entire truck bed is this Goal Zero Yeti 150 right here. This thing powers not only this camp light bulb that is lighting my face right now, but also all of my cameras, my laptop, uh, people's other, you know other people's cameras, phones. This thing is uh, you know it really changed the way that I see trips and how I stay powered on trips. For day two, I teamed up with Jeff Little and Jed Plunkert of Wilderness Systems, and we wanted to hit the main river. The river was actually seven feet higher than normal, and it was ripping. The creek bite in the tributaries was dead. But and we were actually picking up some fish. Jed got a couple fish right away, basically, uh, you know, 20 feet from the put-in. Because that dude is always on fish, always winning tournaments. I mean, he's a machine. 
And we've had a, a pretty significant cold front. We had snow here a couple days ago. And whenever you have that sort of cold front, you definitely need to downsize. As usual, uh, I could not hook up on a subtle presentation. I am useless when it comes to subtle presentations. Every once in a while, I feel a couple taps on my rod tip and try into the hook, feel them on for about one second, and then lose them. Later on, Jeff explained to me why. With a hook that fine, they get it in their mouth, you've already got them. You don't really have to set the hook. They just start moving with it and it goes right in them. So we move out of the tributary and start hitting the main river. We're on this one big eddy, you know, casting into the seam. So he was at the top of this pool that we've been fishing the tail of. I do a lot of flipping rocks and looking under them, catching minnows. Look at that stuff. Look at what they're eating. Because the river's so high, we're trying really hard to jump from eddy to eddy. You know, we have to book it just to cross the river and ferry across without moving too far down and missing the eddy. Now it's hot. I need, I could probably use a coffee. I have a seven hour drive ahead of me. You know, thinking about that, I haven't caught a fish all day. You know, lacking hope. We kind of all split off, spread out. Jeff and Jed kind of move up river. And I'm working the mouth of this creek. We're thinking that, you know, the bigger fish are gonna be on bigger eddy lines, right? Little did I know, Jeff and Jed were hooking up fairly consistently upriver, but because it was late in the day, all my cameras were dead with me in my boat, not catching fish. Without knowing that, I call it quits. I say, all right, we gotta, we gotta get out of here. I gotta hit the road. You know, they're gonna stay out, but, but I gotta hit the road at this point. So we make our way down river. We're moving pretty quick, literally on the last eddy before the takeout. And we are like, you know what? Let's make a couple of casts. We moved in the fish in the backside of these islands with this high water and wind. Um, just just drift in the middle of the seam, the eddy, right behind here. Uh, small tube, just got this one here. Not real solid hook uh, hits. He's hooked right in the roof of the mouth. It's a very, I want to say, passive sort of bite. We're sitting on anchor in this eddy and casting, casting, casting. Probably my last cast before I say, you know what? Forget it. Finally hook up. The fish I got, it's really nothing to brag about, but you know what, I don't care. It's a Susquehanna Smalley, that's what I came for. Catching a giant brown bass is on your bucket list. Head down to the Susquehanna River. Even in, in tough conditions, you still have a chance at a really big fish. My name's Ben Duchaney, I'm the web editor of Kayak Angler Magazine and the host of Hook, Line, and Paddle. Hoping you paddle forever and fish longer. What do you want to do with that? I mean, uh, what we're probably gonna have to do is get over there and walk along the bank with the boat. It's green. Yeah. I'll wait until the waves pass. There's always something. Trains, yeah. right, or boats. Apparently there's a freight train that rips through this campsite about every 45 minutes or so. Things like 100 yards from this truck.